Hi everybody. So the topic for this week is scheduling, project scheduling and network diagrams. Um, and I'm going to quickly go through this with you so that you have an idea what this is about and that you can draw and make basic assumptions and the derivatives of uh, a network diagram. Good. So uh, when we plan, remember when we plan, we've got three basic uh, components to the plan. We spoke about that quite a lot. First one is we need to scope. Second one is need to schedule. And third one is need to, we need to cost. So in the scoping process, we need to figure out what we need to do. And in our, the construction industry, engineering industry, the normal triangle, the client, uh, the consultant or the engineer and the, con and the contractor, uh, the scoping process normally sits within the client or between the client and the consulting engineer to figure out what. And they normally put that out as a tender. The tender says what you need to do. And then the contractor needs to go and figure out how they're going to do that or sequence that into a process. Now, so the second step is the sequence and the third step is the cost. So today we're going to talk about the schedule or the sequencing of those activities. Um, yeah, so when it comes to uh, scheduling, uh, we need to firstly, we need three sets of information. We first need to figure out what we need to do. Yeah? And that comes, like I said, from the scoping process. Then we need to figure out how long those activities are going to be. And I use my engineering background. I use my construction and my project background to figure that out. And lastly, I need to know sort of how these activities fit into each other in terms of the schedule. And you're going to see in a moment what I mean by that. If we know this, if we've got these three sets of information, we can use another tool. And in our case, we've got the network diagram and the Gantt chart. And this today or this week, we're going to use the, the network diagram to schedule this so that we can figure out how we're going to roll out the project. So the network diagram shows visually the flow of the activities through the project. It's a nice way of just looking at it and to see this is how the project goes. Um, this is done by ma making use of uh, the arrows and the boxes. And in our case, the boxes represents the activities and the arrows represent represents the, the relationship between those activities. And if we do have this now, we can make assumptions. We make calculations in terms of how long the project is going to take and other information, which we're going to talk about now. So you can see the simple example over there has got three activities. I dig the hole. It takes me one day. I pour the concrete. It takes me one day. I build the wall and it's finished. But I can't pour the concrete if the hole is not finished. And I can't build the wall if the concrete is not finished. So that's sort of the flow through the project. So now we can do this. What we do is we use, we can derive two main sets of information and that the first one is the duration of the project, which is very nice. We need to know how long the project takes to complete in a planning sense. Remember guys, we are still planning. And number two, uh, which activities are the critical activities? Because those are the activities we really need to look after in the process. Now, so there's two definitions over there. The first is the critical path. The critical path is the longest path through a project. And that longest path will give me the duration of the project. And the critical activities are those activities on the critical paths. And those are the activities, if you delay any of those activities, you are going to delay the total duration of the project, which is not good. So we call that critical activities because we really look after them very, very carefully. So what are the steps that we follow? Well, the first step is we need to figure out how the diagram looks like. So we need to draw this. And I'm going to show you in a moment how we're going to use information to draw that. The second one is we second step is we need to uh, know uh, what the durations are. We need to look at the durations through the project to figure out what the longest branch or route is through your project. And the third one is you identify your critical activities by these activities which are on the longest route in the project. So let's look at a very, very simple example to start off with. I've got three activities. This is what I've just been showing you up there. The first one is to dig a hole one day, pour concrete one day, but I need the hole to be completed. And the third activity, one day, but I need the concrete to be finished. First step, draw it out, knowing what the durations are. Second step, identify the longest route. Now, guys, this is easy because there is only one route or one branch in this project. No. So it's dig a hole, pour concrete, 
build a wall, so it's 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, and that gives me my critical path through the project, and all of my critical, all, my, all of my critical, all of my activities on this on this project is a, is critical. But what if it's not like that? Let's look like look at another example. So now I've got five activities: compact the ground, pour the concrete, build a wall, build a column, and build a roof. Compact the ground. I don't need anything to do this. I've got a duration of one. Pour the concrete. The ground needs to be compacted before I can pour the concrete. Build a wall. I, I, I need to pour the concrete before that, and it's a duration of two. Build a column. I need to pour the concrete, because remember, both the wall and the, the, the column is on the concrete. A duration of one. And then lastly, is build the roof. And I need um, the wall and the column to be complete before this. Now, because the, wall, the roof sits on the column and the wall. First step, I need to draw this out. Now, so you can see activity one, I don't need anything. That's why it's in the beginning. Activity two, I need only the compacted ground to do that. That's why I draw that, and that's why I have that arrow there. The arrow is very important, guys. Activity three, I need to pour the concrete. There's activity three. There's the concrete slab. So the arrow goes from the slab to the wall. Activity four is uh, uh, um, build the column. And again, I need the concrete, uh, the, the slab for that. So I draw it over there, and I take the arrow from the slab to the to the column because I need this to do that, but I also need this to do that. And in the third one, I need to build the roof, and there we say I need the wall and the column for that. That's why that those arrows go into that. Now, so that's the first step. Then I can have a look at this, guys, and you, like I said, the, you identify the longest route. Now, this only has two routes. Now, it's got this route over there, and it's got this route over there. First route, one, two, three, five. Second route, one, two, four, five. And what I then do is I identify the longest route. Now, can you see this route over here? The first route is going to be one plus one is two, plus two is four, plus one is five. The second route is going to be one plus one plus one plus one is four. So my longest route is one, two, three, five. And that is then my critical critical path is my critical activities and my duration for the project will be five days good guys so go and have a look at the example there's a um, quite enough examples over there um, go and have a look at the video with one of the examples and then you can do the tutorial and remember to hand that in before monday thank you guys